welcome back to Monkeytron Collective. Uh, first of all, Happy New Year everyone. Today, 1st of January here in Scotland. Uh, I'm not in the main HQ today, uh, I've been away for New Year, uh, but I've brought all my stuff with me and it's not going to stop me doing a wee video on this thing here today. We have a uh, North Stratobo. <clears throat> this was a present for my son for his birthday. His birthday is right before Christmas. Uh, we've managed to find this on Amazon in the UK. They've not, I know they've been out in the States for a long time, six months or so, but they've only just appeared here in the UK and uh, we're quite keen to get our hands on it. <coughs> I need to excuse my throat, I've got a real sore throat, been loaded with the cold the last few days. Anyway, uh, we're really keen to get our hands on this. My son really likes his bows, he has a couple of different bows he uses at Nerf Wars, uh, mainly a strong heart bow. But it only being a four shot, it's not the most practical, but this being a 15 shot clip, it's actually going to be a war practical blaster, we reckon. Uh, we also love a bit of archery here at Monkeytron Collective. It's uh, something we kind of tend to do as a family when we're out and about. If we're on holiday somewhere, we always do archery things. Uh, a couple of us even have our own bows and we sometimes up to woods do a bit of target practice uh, with some wee targets and things on the trees. So yeah, we do love our bows and our archery here. So we were quite keen to get hands on this and yeah, it seems to be a good functioning practical uh, Nerf bow. So what I'm, first thing I'm going to do is we're going to get this outside on the chronograph. I've got a brand new pack of darts here unopened. Uh, Elite darts, the Doomlands brand ones. These were going really cheap in the local supermarket so we picked up a few boxes. 30 darts there. <clears throat> so we'll run uh, the full 30 darts plus a couple extras through this and we'll get a good count on the chronograph and see exactly what it's doing. Then we'll bring it back, we'll open it up. Uh, I've also got a bag of springs here. Bag of springs and tools. Uh, we'll open this up, see what we can do spring wise, and uh, put it back together. And uh, we'll chronograph it again after that and see what we've got. Uh, hopefully, we'll get this up and running to be a decent uh, bow to be using for my son uh, at the North Wars. Uh, if we can get it a really good performance, it's going to be worth it. 15 shots, uh, front loading, it's going to be good. Anyway, I'll do the chronograph, we'll get back to you in a bit. Right, here we go, outside on the chronograph. A uh, bit noisy, excuse the car's <laughs> whizzing past. So here we are, we've got a fresh pack of darts here. Uh, we're going to crack open these Dooman darts, we'll get them in the bowl, and we'll get the chronograph going. I think we've got just enough good sunlight today to get the chronograph working, so we'll see how we get on. So I'll load this up. Uh, we'll do empty the clip, reload, empty the clip again. We'll get at least 30 shots, maybe more, we'll see. Okay. Here we are, fully loaded. Let's see what we can get. I'll just reset, cut this and reset the chrono. Right, so there we have, we have 52 shots on the chrono. We'll just come in, we'll do a quick review of this now. We'll go back down the shots until we get to the end. Quite a few issues with the, how the darts fired there. There was lots of misfires and all sorts. So anyway, we've got a high of 82, right? That was duplicated a couple of times. We had a low shot of 53. That was duplicated a couple of times as well. The average, here we go, 67, not bad, that's a leaked standard average, pretty much. Uh, extreme spread of 29, so that's quite a wide range of shots we've got there. And standard deviation was 4% on that. So, what do we do, we'll go back inside, we'll get this opened, I'll take out the highest and lowest and we'll get a better average on that, and I'll give you the figures in the evening. So here we are, we're back inside and I've uh, opened up the Stratobo, uh, we'll have a look inside, this is our first look at it. First of all, I just want to go over that chrono data for you. So the original high shot was 82, so that was deleted and our next high shot was 75. Uh, original lowest was 53, the next lowest was 54. Uh, so it still gives us an average of 67 overall, which is not bad, with a spread of 21 and a standard deviation of 3%, which is really not bad for a kind of bow. Uh, blaster. 
like this. Uh, so yeah, it's good. So, but yeah, inside, first time I've had a look inside this really. We've got the plunger tube in here. Uh, as you pull the string on the plunger tube, it actuates this rod down here, which activates the kind of ratchet here, which slides your clip up uh, and cycles through. Seems to be a kind of smart AR in there, which I take it alternates between the barrels. When I was firing it, I had some issues with the darts firing kind of out of sequence. It missed skipping some darts. Some fired two at a time. I don't know if I was just rushing it or whatever. Uh, my son had a quick run about the garden shooting it. He managed to fire off the full clip completely in order with no issues. So it could be just a kind of technique thing. And obviously, once you've primed it, there's, you've got this little orange bit down here which slides down and goes to the little window here, which is your kind of prime indicator. So you know once that goes orange, you're kind of pulled it back far enough and your plunger's full, fully kind of uh, extended. Uh, but yeah, apart from that, it seems fairly simple inside. Uh, what I'm going to do is gonna, we'll take out the plunger tube I'll have a look at the spring, see if we can switch the spring out for something a bit more powerful. I've got my bag of springs over there. Uh, oh, yeah, we'll probably we'll have a look at the seal on the plunger tube as well and see if we can tighten the seal up. And uh, yeah, that's about all we'll do. We'll just kind of re-lube everything so it all operates nice and smoothly. But apart from that, I'm not going to touch it. Uh, we, are, we do have a paint job in mind for this as well, uh, but that'll be a separate video later on. It's not going to be getting done today. Just going to do this mod today and see see how we can get it going. Right, anyway, I'll leave this here and I'll get back to you once I've had a bit of a better look and poke around inside it. Cheers. So here we are. I've popped out the plunger tube here. It's quite quite an odd design here. This plunger tube. You've got. I've taken off this kind of actuator bit and the priming indicator bar that kind of screws into the back here of this kind of floating plunger head that's attached to the string. Uh, the spring's quite a lengthy spring, I'm not sure what that's compatible with, but we'll have a look and see what else we've got. But yeah, you've got this whole plunger tube here, but the only effective bit of the plunger tube is this inch at the top up here, because this is all completely open at the side here. So, although the plunger pulls all the way back to there, it doesn't actually do anything until it gets to this top bit up here, then that's where it engages and compresses the air and squishes it out. Uh, this isn't really a smart AR at the top there, it's just a uh, an AR, but obviously because the clip's kind of staggered, uh, if there's a dart in one of the chambers, it'll actuate the air restrictor and let the air flow through, uh, and if not, it uh, engages the air restrictor. Uh, so yeah, it's not a smart air, it's just a kind of single one, just kind of doubled up. But yeah, it's kind of odd. This is basically your effect effective plunger tube area, which is a bit strange. Uh, so no wonder it's got quite a big spring on there, so I don't know what we're going to add to this spring to make it a bit more powerful, but I'll have a look through. I might just double it up with another a leak spring, or I'm not sure if adding a five kilo spring onto that will do much, because this is quite a lengthy spring, and it does feel quite stiff. Uh, I'll need to maybe unthread that uh, around the string, or just take the string off and undo it. Oh, I've not worked that out yet. But yeah, I'll, uh, I'll have another look and uh, get back to you. Right, hello there. We're back again. Uh, been at this a couple of hours now. It's a bit complicated, a bit hard to get hold of. Originally, this is the stock spring that comes with the, the Stratibo. It's very long, uh, way longer than any other spring I've seen, apart from maybe the Mega Magnus, which is a bit chunkier. So this is your, this is my Elite Upgrade spring, and as you can see, it's quite a bit shorter. Uh, so it wasn't really going to do anything. It was just kind of flopping about in the plunger tube, wasn't really making making any purchase on it. Uh, so here we have the plunger tube, I've taken apart, I've taken off the bottom bit of the plunger tube here and popped out the kind of floating plunger head which I've resealed with a bit of tape. Uh, so my original plan was I put in, I think was this was a strong arm spring and this was, uh, and I think this, which was a Vulcan spring possibly, I think it's a Vulcan Havoc Fire spring upgrade. So two of them together was uh, pretty much the exact same length as the stock spring, so I thought I'll put them in. So I did that, put them together, just kind of against each other. And I didn't intertwine them, I just had them sat there. Uh, so I put it all back together, it didn't really feel very much powerful. I chronoed it again, and the chrono regions came out actually 66 feet, I think, uh, FPS, which is actually less than the original stock spring was. So I've taken that apart again, and here we have plan two. The thing, the floating plunger head is hollow, so the stock stock spring, when it's on, kind of seats up inside. 
the, the plunger head here so you've got about an inch or so there where it sits up inside so that's what's causing issues with the elite upgrade spring not being able to fit in so what I've done is I found this which is actually the lid off a, lip, a lipstick I think uh, supplied to me thankfully by my other half so what we've done we've, we took the cap off the plunger it's got a rubber it's got a little rubber stopper on the end stop it slamming into the top of the plunger tube so pop that off unthread the string uh, I managed to drill a hole through the top here and this will now slide up <coughs> into the plunger head like so boom and co give us a nice spacer at the top of the plunger head there and I'm now going to try and fit the elite upgrade spring into this and it will nice just sit nicely on top of the spacer there and that should give us a good five kilo plus spring in there now compared to the stock spring which I'm not just quite a tough spring this actually but it's just it's massive and quite wide coils on it so hopefully <clears throat> the elite upgrade spring will now just drop in and uh yeah, hopefully this will work. I'm going to put this back together now and we'll give it another test. Unfortunately, the light's dying away outside, so I'm not going to be able to chronograph this tonight. Uh, so we'll need to do that again in the morning. But hopefully uh, we should feel the difference after this new spring goes in now. Anyway, thanks a lot. I'll get back to you in a minute. So here we are, back again, finally. Uh, finally finished on the Stratibo. Uh, well, finished for just now. Uh, we might revisit this again. I'm going to have to open it up to paint it again anyway. So we have some new chronograph results. I have them on a bit of paper somewhere. <laughs> so anyway, ended up uh, putting a elite upgrade spring, the five kilo Blaster Smith UK upgrade spring in it. I had to do a bit of the the stock spring for this was really long. So I at first tried to add, I think the Vulcan and the other spring. I explained that earlier. When I did that, it actually had a negative effect on it. The chronograph results went down uh, by one feet per second, I think. Uh, so I then had to block up the in, inside. The floating plunger head it was kind of hollow, as I showed you. So we filled that in and we managed to get the 5 kilo Blastersmith spring in and that worked fine. And you could definitely feel it uh, punching a bit harder. On the chrono, we did another 50 shot shoot. Well, 52 shots, took out the highest and lowest. Highest shot was 77, lowest was 56, giving us an average of 71 on it again, uh, which is an increase of 4 FPS for pretty much an entire day's work. So uh, not all uh, entirely worthwhile, but it was good fun opening it up. Uh, the shots seemed to be a bit more consistent. That probably comes from the plunger tube. The seal on the plunger tube was quite bad. It wasn't particularly tight, so we'd sealed it up a bit. So that's maybe helped it a bit, bit more consistent as well. Uh, so yeah, I think to get anything out of this, you're going to have to have, <clears throat> as I say, the effective plunger tube uh, length is about an inch long. It's not very big. So you're going to, going to have to have a really strong spring in there to punch it. But I'm not sure how much more you're going to get out of this, really. I'm not sure what take, take the air strength out would help it at all. I don't really want to risk that now. Uh, we're going to see, we'll see how it operates in some North Wales Force and see how effective it is before we try and tune it up again. Uh, we're gonna, we'll probably break it down and do a nice, I've got a good paint job in mind for it, that my son wants. Uh, but other than that, yeah, it's good. Good, uh, comfy grip, quite chunky handle, nice adult sized grip. You've got the priming indicator on the back, so you pull that down, you can see the red. You can also just deprime it by gently letting the string go. Once it cycles up to the things, you just slam it back down, refill it and you're good to go again. So it's quite quick to reload and operate. And uh, it just it feels good, looks good, looks like a bow, has a good bow action on it. It uh, does everything that you want it to do, really. And it hits, uh, yeah, hits comparatively hard. It's up there with other Elite Blasters. Uh, it's maybe not up there with the modded stuff, but uh, for a bow, compared to the other North bows that we've had, uh, it's good and practical. We uh, really enjoy it. <coughs> As I say, we've got a couple of North Bows coming up this month, so we'll test it out in the battle and see how it goes. But anyway, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, thanks for sticking to this uh, rather lengthy <laughs> kind of review and mod video. Uh, it's been good fun doing it. Uh, should be some more to come. So Monkey John Collective, check us out on Facebook. Keep up to date with everything. Uh, please like and subscribe. Plenty more content coming. Anyway, thanks a lot, guys. Cheerio.